Ukrainian officials insist the small town of Solidaire has not been lost to Russian forces, despite claims by the owner of a Russian mercenary army known as the Wagner Group, which is now in control. Claims the Kremlin has been unwilling to make, instead saying only there has been a positive trend. Meantime, a CNN crew not far from the front lines of Solidaire reports the sound of outgoing artillery fire and say Ukrainian troops appear to be calm. One soldier saying the situation is difficult, the next 24 hours will be critical. New satellite images show homes and apartments before the battle for Solidaire and what the area looks like now. The salt mining town not far from the city of Bakhmut, which has been under siege by Russian forces for weeks. Ukraine's president says the Russian offensive to control Solidaire has a lot more to do with claiming a victory, any victory it seems, than any kind of strategic gain. The terrorist state and propagandists are trying to pretend that some part of our city of Solodar, almost completely destroyed by the occupiers, is some kind of achievement of Russia. They will present this to their society in order to support mobilization and to give hope to those who are for aggression. But the fighting continues. The Donetsk front is holding. The battle for Solidar is already one of the most brutal and bloody of the war so far, and Ukrainian officials are urging residents of the towns and surrounding villages who are still there to evacuate ahead of that Russian offensive. But as CNN's Ben Wiedemann reports, not far from Solidar, many are determined to stay. Medics load a wounded soldier onto an ambulance, another casualty from the embattled town of Solidar. One day, 20 and 25. It varies depending on the number of casualties on the front lines. Russian forces, mostly troops from the Wagner Group, the private military company, claim to have control of the entire Solidar territory. The battle for Solidar may be in its final stages and it doesn't appear to be going well for the Ukrainians. And if indeed the Russians do emerge victorious, the villages around it may be the next to fall. Ukraine's helicopters still flying sorties, its forces aren't giving ground easily. One soldier says it's difficult, but we're hanging in there. Despite the fighting, Ira is staying put with her pigs and cows in her home in a nearby village. We won't leave, she says. You can only die once. I will not abandon my house. Her 81-year-old mother, Ludmila, has lived here for more than 40 years. We had a good life here, she says. Serhi Goshko heads the Solidar military administration. I'm delivering aid, he says, and reminding people they need to evacuate before it's too late. Svitlana says she'll heed his call. Everyone is tired, she tells me. We can't take it any longer. As Solidar burns, there is little time to waste. Ben Wiedemann, CNN, outside Solidar. Another shakeup of Russian military commanders with Vladimir Putin appointing head of the Russian general staff, General Valery Gerasimov, to oversee all Russian military forces in Ukraine. He replaces General Sergei Solovakin, who had the job for just three months. The official reason, according to the Kremlin, to improve coordination among all military branches. Vladimir Putin says he's hoping to solve the most critical issues. I understand that the situation in new regions is difficult. In some places, combat actions are ongoing. Peaceful life has not been restored everywhere, and the safety of people has not been ensured. Of course, all these factors should be taken into consideration. But all this is not the reason to take a break and postpone for later. Joining me now from Brisbane is retired Australian Army Major General Mick Ryan. General, thank you for being with us, sir. Hi, John. Okay, here's how one advisor to Ukraine's president described the fighting around Solodar and Bakhmut. Listen to this. Everything that is happening today in the direction of Bakhmut or Solodar is the bloodiest scenario of this war. A lot of blood, a lot of artillery duels, a lot of contact combat, especially in Solodar.
Uh, it seems that strategic value of Solodar is inversely proportional to the size, scale and intensity of this Russian offensive to try and take it. So will the destruction be so extensive, the cost so high in terms of blood and treasure for the Russians that a win will ultimately be a loss? Well, I think it'll be a pyrrhic victory if indeed they do have a victory there. Um, they've wasted thousands of Russian lives, mobilised troops and some of the elite troops they sent from Kherson after withdrawal there. Uh, the military value of Solidar and Bakhmut is, is very low. So given the resources they've expended, it's a very poor return on investment for the Russian military. Yeah, we're almost a year now into this war, and it seems it's sort of been almost role reversal here. The Russians are the ones you know, try on defence, trying to hold on to territory they have. The, the Ukrainians are on offence, trying to force them back and reclaim that ground. Uh, and that means the Ukrainians now need a lot more firepower. So with that in mind, here's the president of Poland, who is visiting Lviv in Ukraine on Wednesday. So this. Lately, we decided that the moment for Poland to decisively support Ukraine has come. A company of leopard tanks will be handed over as part of coalition building. OK, so a company of tanks, that sounds great, but what, it's 14 in all? And, you know, right now, the US is not committing tanks. The Germans are sort of on the fence over, the, over committing leopard tanks. So the British look likely to commit the challenges, but they're going to need a lot more than 14 tanks from Poland. Well, indeed they are. They're going to need hundreds more. But the reality is the Poles have really given their fair share. They've given uh, the Ukrainians over 250 of their Soviet-era tanks. The reality is they're giving these leopards to Ukraine to force Germany and other European nations to give more leopards as well. Uh, Ukraine needs uh, M1s and leopard tanks, not old Soviet-era tanks at the moment, and it needs lots of them. Well, the United States has, what, about 2,000 M1 Abrams tanks sitting in a desert in California doing absolutely nothing. Uh, why not send a few hundred of those to Ukraine? Well, uh, you'd have to ask the US administration, but with Bradley's on the way now, the M1s could well be next. So a very fine tank. I've certainly commanded a brigade with them myself in Australia. And we, we shouldn't overestimate the logistic difficulties. Ukrainians are very canny. They've proven themselves able to absorb advanced equipment before. They'd be able to do the same with M1s. Uh, I want you to listen to what the Russian president told his cabinet about the ongoing fighting in territory which Moscow recently illegally annexed. Here he is. I understand that the situation in new regions is difficult. In some places, combat actions are ongoing. Peaceful life hasn't been restored everywhere and the safety of people hasn't been ensured. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult, but nothing to see here. Actions, though, often speak louder than words. And after just three months in charge of the Russian forces in Ukraine, General Armageddon has been sacked. Uh, Putin's replaced him with the chief of general staff. So what does this latest shake-up say about Putin's thinking here? And does it mean anything in terms of how the Russians may change their tactics or plan to fight in the months ahead? Well, I think it says more about palace politics in Moscow than it does about battlefield outcomes in Ukraine. Sort of, it can, has actually been probably the better Russian commander of this war, and it's a very low bar, to be frank. Uh, Gerasimov has been fairly inept so far during this war, so we shouldn't expect him taking over command to make any difference significantly on the battlefield. It's really a power play to ensure uh, the Russian military overcomes the influence that Wagner is now um, having in Moscow and beyond. Retired Australian Army Major General Mick Ryan, so thank you for your time. Thank you for being with us and your insights. Very much appreciated. Thank you.